John chapter number 4. Thank you, Miss Noreen. We're going to begin reading in verse number 3. The Bible says, And he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, about noon. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask to, have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews." But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers uh, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When He is come, He will tell us all things. Uh, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man uh, said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot uh, and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did is, is not this the Christ. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good Sunday school hour. We thank you for the good testimony. But most of all, we thank you for being a good God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray you'd bind the strong man. And I pray that, Lord, you'd walk through here in a powerful and wonderful way. I pray that every saint of God would be set on fire for thee. I pray when we leave this place, people would take note that we've been with Jesus. Father, I pray for those in our midst that may not be saved by the good grace of God. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would go by their way, uh, uh, show them their condition, but show them Christ. Uh, God, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, 
Father, I pray that for that one uh, who is seeking big things from you, God, you'd show up big for them. Uh, Father, I pray for that one that is struggling, you would strengthen them. Uh, that one that is hurting, you'd heal them. Uh, that one that has uh, that special need that nobody knows about, uh, that God, you would walk by their way uh, and meet that need. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are sick, uh, not able to come today, that God, you'd touch their bodies. Uh, Father, I pray for that one or those uh, that are providentially hindered, you'd help them. Uh, then, Father, I pray for those that are shut in, that can't come. Uh, God, you'd sit down where they are and help them. Uh, now, Father, for the next few minutes, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake uh, and help your people. Uh, we'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, uh, and give you all praise and honor that you are so deserving of. Uh, now, Father, have your way now, and we'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name, uh, the name above every name, the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Uh, Amen. I want you to hang with me right now. I've got uh, some work to do in building the foundation in the introduction. Uh, this is what I refer to as a Thaddeus introduction. Uh, the introduction will be longer than the message. Uh, but hey, before an airplane can ever take flight, it's got to have a runway. And so we're going to give you a little runway this morning. Uh, but I want you to notice the Bible. Keep your nose in the Bible. Uh, I'm interested in what the Bible says to us today. All right? Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, uh, the way. Uh, look again, if you will, in verse number 3. Uh, the Bible says, He left Judea, speaking of Jesus, uh, and departed again into Galilee, uh, and he must needs uh, go through Samaria. I'm here to tell you, the Bible said in John 14, chapter 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He who is the way, made a way, went out of his way to come to this well because he knew at noon there'd be a lady who needed to get in the way. So he made a way to come to where she was. Hey, I'm here to tell you on the third Saturday night of March in 1974, I'm glad he went out of his way way, came to Little Baptist Church where I was, showed me my need, and that night he saved my never dying soul. They tell me that he went some 30 miles out of his way through rocky territory to get to where this woman was. Can I say what a Savior? We see the way. I want you to notice the well in verse number 6. The Bible says, now Jacob's well was there. Can I say Jacob's will was established uh, uh, nearly 2,000 years prior to his arrival? Can I say I'm glad that some 2,000 years ago a well was uh, established for our arrival today. Yeah? I'm glad there is a well that we can drink from uh, that the world knows nothing about. Uh, a well that has living water uh, uh, that will change our lives for all time and eternity. We see there's a way, there's a well. Now notice the woman. Look at verse number 7. The Bible says, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Now this is important because in verse number 6 it says it was the sixth hour. It was noontime. Now here comes this woman to draw water at noontime. Now... You have to understand, at new time, the sun is straight up. Where we're talking about in Samaria is desert. It's hot. It's probably 110, 115 degrees at this time. Why did she go to get water? Well, she needed water for all of her living that day. She needed cooking water. She needed drinking water. She needed water to uh, uh, make certain if she had some cattle or camels or animals that they had water. She had to draw water so they could survive that day. Now, could I say this? Most women would show up before the sun came up or right as the sun was coming up to get water. It was probably only about 75, 80 then. Why is she coming when the sun's at its hot, highest point? And the heat is on. Why would she do that? Because of her life, she couldn't come to the well when the other women were there. Her life, her testimony was so tainted. She had a curse on her in the eyes of the other people in the community. 
we see the woman, we see the well, we see the way. Now notice this water. Look at verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith uh, uh, to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee, notice this phrase, living water. The woman saith unto her, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, uh, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Oh yeah, he's greater than Jacob. Which gave us uh, 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 the well and drank uh, thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus uh, answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, the water in that well, shall thirst again. Mm -mm. You know, let me just stop right there. You know why so many people quit drinking every, every Monday but go back to it on Friday? You know why so many people go to AA and all these programs to stop doing things that they can't stop doing? Uh, because the well of this world, it can't change you and it can't satisfy you. But look what he goes on to say. Verse 13, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Verse 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Huh? She goes on to say, uh, The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Now let me just say something about when you get a drink of living water, you lose a taste for the waters of this world. Huh? Can I say, I drink all the booze I want to drink. I just don't drink any. You know why? Because living water satisfied my longing. You listen, I do all the crowds that around that I want to do. I just don't do any because living water took over. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the things in this world don't satisfy you, uh, but living water will satisfy you. It'll change your life. Uh, can I say, not only is this water satisfying, it's living water. This water is spiritual. Hmm? It's mm, a living water that springeth up. Look what he says. It's a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Hmm? Thank God for the Spirit of God. Thank God that the water He's referring to is the Spirit Himself. Hmm? When I got saved, I got sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, uh, and that well springs up every now and then. Say, why did that woman just jump up and testify? She had a little water, living water bubbling up. It got, it got to uh, 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 turn it into a geyser there for a minute. She just had to get up and praise the Lord. Uh, 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 why do people raise their hand? Why do people shout? Why do people smile? Why do people hit the altar? Why do they do that? That living water gets to bubbling. You've got to do something with it. It's a spiritual water. It's a satisfying water. But can I say it's a straightforward water? Look at verse 15. He said... The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Now let me just stop right here. Right now, she's wanting the water Jesus is offering, but she's wanting the right thing for the wrong reasons. She's wanting this living water, Miss Mary, so she'd never get thirsty again. And so she wouldn't have to come out in this heat and draw anymore. You see, it's, it's become a, a hazard and a harassment, and an embarrassment. And she didn't want to deal with all that anymore. So give me this water, take away all my problems. You, you, have you ever known somebody, uh, uh, their life hits rock bottom, then all of a sudden they want to get real churchy? Yeah. Then all of a sudden they're praying, asking Jesus to do something for them, and when it's not taken care of the next day, they quit church. Yeah. See, they're wanting the right thing, but for the wrong reason. They're wanting Jesus to change their problems when Jesus is interested in changing you. See, living water is straightforward. She wants it for the wrong reason. Look what he tells her now. In verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. See, this is a straightforward water. This water showed her the errors of her ways. Jesus said, Go call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. 
He said, you're, you're right. You've had five. And the one you got now you're with is not your husband. You're shacking up. Mm. And living water straightforward. Now, Miss Jackie, a lot of people like these feel-good churches where they sugarcoat everything. But you see, the Bible doesn't sugarcoat anything. Amen. The Bible calls a spade a spade. And the Bible is not gray, it's black and white. And the Bible names sin and adultery and fornication still sin. Jesus said, call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. She said, he said, you're right, but you're shacking up with somebody. See, the water of God straightforward. See, nobody's going to have their lives changed by Jesus till they come face to face with the fact that they're a sinner and they need their lives changed. Hmm? She's sinful. The water told her that. That's what living water does. It shows you the error of your ways. You know what I love about this book? See, I can be real critical of Brother Tommy. It's real easy to do until I get in this book. And see, when I get in this book, the Bible says this is a looking glass. It's a mirror. When I get in this book, I don't see Brother Tommy anymore. You know whose faults I see? Mine. You know why people don't like to read the Bible? Because God wrote this book, and God shows you your problems. Hmm? Can I say? We see the water. Now, can I say something about this straightforward water? It'll confront you. You know why we could pack the house out? We got a good crowd this morning for a snowy morning. But you know how we could pack it out? Just have singings all the time. People love singings. I love singing. I love godly singing. I love the Tab family last week. I love hearing them sing. I love hearing Brother James sing. I, I even love hearing Miss Brittany sing. No, I love hearing everybody sing. I love singers. I know a lot of good singers. We got some great singers coming from camp. I mean, I love singing. It blesses me real good. But God didn't choose through the foolishness of singing to save them that believe. You know why people don't like preaching? Preaching confronts them. See, teaching just imparts knowledge. Preaching requires a decision. It confronts you. Can I say something else? It'll convict you. Uh, she had to acknowledge that Jesus was telling her the truth. She said, I perceive you're a prophet. I mean, he was naming her household right there. He's just cutting her rug. Mm. But notice something else. Living water converts you. See, people say, well, why do you gotta, why do you gotta tell about the Bible? Why, why do you gotta? Because the Bible is what converts you to Christ. We're begotten again by an incorruptible seed. God chose through the foolishness of preaching this book to save them that would believe. And the Spirit of God takes the Word of God, shows you the error of your ways, and then draws you to God and changes your life. It converts you. No wonder the old songwriter wrote, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. It amazes me how many people know so much about church and everything, but they just don't give their heart to God. Hmm. It amazes me how many people are so critical of preachers. They want to come tell me what the Bible says, and they haven't even opened it. Mm -mm. We see the water. Notice what he says about worship, verse 21. I mean, Jesus is being straightforward with this woman. Verse 21, Jesus saith unto her, woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship... Ye know not what. Can I say? Florence, Kentucky has a bunch of churches today that people in there worshiping, they don't even know what they're worshiping. They're going to church, but they're not having church. They worship, but they know not what. He said, we know what we worship for salvations of the Jews. God chose the Jews as his chosen people. But look at verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is when true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You've got to have the Word of God and you've got to have the Spirit of God living water inside of you to worship. You can't worship Him if He don't dwell in you. 
Not the way God wants you to worship Him. Hmm? Listen. The trees, when their leaves blow in the wind, they're worshiping God. That's what He created them to do. When flowers bloom, they worship God. That's what He created them to do. When the wolves howl at the moon, they're worshiping God. That's what He created them to do. When the birds are singing in the morning, they're worshiping God. That's what He created them to do. What He created man to do was to make a conscious decision to worship Him because we love Him. He first loved us. And unless you know Him, you cannot worship Him. You may go through the motions, but you're not worshiping Him from your heart. And that's where worship is born. Can I say this? Notice her water pot in verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man. Notice she left her water pot. That's why she went there for. She went there to satisfy her living. But she left with life. Get a hold of that. And then notice her witness. She says there in verse number 29, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Can I say the first evidence that somebody has gotten born again, they want to tell somebody else. That's the first thing they want to do. They want to tell others what happened to them. You show me somebody that's ashamed to tell somebody about Jesus, I'll tell you somebody, I doubt they even know him. Mm. That's the first thing she wanted to do. I'm interested this morning in that water pot. I want to preach for just a few minutes on what she left in her water pot. What she left in her water pot. The Bible said she left her water pot. And when she left it, she left some things in it. Mm, hallelujah. Can I say the first thing she left in her water pot was her past. I mean, when the, uh, uh, Jesus confronts her, He deals with her past, five husbands that she'd had. And now He deals with her present, the one you got's not your husband. But when she left, her past was still in that water pot. Uh, 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 can I say something? What a blessing. Uh, uh, the day I got born again, my past ceased to exist. Uh, it was gone. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, uh, what was in your past? Uh, my sin was in my past. Uh, it was cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, hey, can I say my shame was in my past? Uh, those things I was ashamed of, uh, I don't have to be ashamed anymore. They're gone. Hallelujah. Hey, my slate was in my past, my history. It's gone. What a blessing. She lost her history that day. This scarlet woman became a saved woman. And she was new in Christ that day. She left her past in that water pot. No wonder the Apostle Paul who was guilty of arresting Christians. Uh, 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 doing it in the name of God, by the way. Uh, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He's on the Sanhedrin Council. Uh, he's arresting Christians. Uh, uh, can I say he was uh, guilty of having Christians murdered. Uh, he held the coats of those that stoned Stephen. Uh, hey, he's on his way to arrest more Christians. Uh, and God appears to him, uh, saves him uh, on the road to Damascus, uh, uh, changes his life. Uh, he becomes the great apostle Paul. Uh, and Paul wrote this, uh, forgetting those things which are behind, uh, I press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ. Uh, what's he saying? Uh, my past is gone. Uh, I'm not going to go dwell there. I'm no longer a murderer. I'm no longer accusing Christians. He said, I'm saved, the child of God. I'm going to press till I get to heaven. I'm headed that way, not backwards. Because I have no past. What a blessing. She lost her past in the, and she left that in her water pot. Hmm? Uh, you know, some of you are dragging around your past. You need to and get that under the blood and leave it. Some of you, it's under the blood and the devil's still reminding you of it every day. You know what you need to do? Go, go, go take the devil and show him the blood. He hates the blood of Christ. He said, if God's forgot it, it's gone, devil. Shut up. That's how to help you. She left her past in a water pot. And I say this, she left her penalty in the water pot. You see, without that living water, she'd have died and went to hell. Hmm. She was already condemned to die, for the wages of sin is death. 
There is a, a, a penalty uh, uh, upon death, a price for sin, uh, and it's called damnation. She would have went to the lake of fire forever and burnt, paying for her sins. Never to be able to pay the price and would burn in forever in hell. But when she got living water, she left her penalty there. Huh? I'm glad he took uh, my offenses huh, that were contrary to him and nailed them to his cross and took him out of the way. I'm glad he paid my price. Uh, I'm glad when I was on the auction block of sin, lost without God, uh, headed to hell, uh, he came by my way and told me if I'd believe on him, he'd pay my price. Uh, he paid my price on Calvary, uh, washed me from my sin, and my penalty's gone. Uh, isn't it a blessing I traded a penalty for the prize? I get to go to glory, huh? Uh, her penalty and her past is in that water pot. Can I say this? Her pretenses are in that water pot. All of her excuses. How many people you know, you've tried to tell them about the Lord, tried to tell them about getting saved, tried to tell them about uh, getting ready for heaven, and all they do is give you excuses. Not now. But preacher. Huh? It amazes me how many people got excuses why they don't get right with God. Uh. This is one of their favorites. Well, I'm just as good as that Donald sitting on the front row. Uh, and if he's all right with God, then I'm all right with God. Well, see, when you look at Donald, it's not impressive, I admit. Uh, what she saw in Donald, I have no idea. He's just Donald. Uh he looks the same as he did the first day he came in here. But what we can't see is what's in his heart. Right. You see, that's where the living water's at. That's where the blood's been applied. Uh, see, the outward composition really don't matter. It's that inward man that matters. And if you want to be like Donald, you get the inward man. Hmm? Now, I, I don't know much about Donald other than the fact that I know unless something grossly is wrong when them doors are open, he's sitting right there. And I notice that when somebody's singing and God touches it, he's over there weeping. And I know when somebody's a preaching and God's a touching it, he's over there rejoicing uh, uh, because of the preaching. Uh, and I know when uh, uh, an invitation's given, he's on the altar praising God or praying for somebody. Uh, now, I don't know about your excuses, uh, but I tell you what, if you want to be like that, that's a good candidate to be like. Uh, uh, just get the way your heart's overflowing with God, uh, and you can't do enough but praise Him and worship Him for how good He is. But see, everybody's got excuses. Well, I'm just as good as so-and-so. Or somebody I work with says they go to church, and I'm just as good as them. I'm, well, here's your mark. If you want to be as good as somebody, the mark is Christ. And you tell me you're as good as Him, I'll leave you alone. And there ain't nobody righteous, no, not one. But I'm glad I'm robed in His righteousness. Hmm. All her pretense, all of her excuses. Well, I have to go draw water at noon because I... You know, other people look at me different, look at me funny. I don't go to church because people look at me funny. They're just looking at you shocked you're here. Uh, well, all them people at church think they're better than me. They don't. People that are right with God, you know what they think? They think, I'm not worthy to be here. People that are right with God say, who am I that God would save me? Who am I that God would want to use me? Who am I that I, I get to come to church and worship? Who am I? That's what saved people think. Uh, hmm. uh, can, I, can I help you with something? Most people don't even have you on their mind. They come through those doors. They got him on their mind. But see, you've got all the excuses. You've been listening to the devil. You've got all these excuses why you don't get right with God. Well, so-and-so believes this, and so-and-so believes... It don't matter what anybody believes. It matters what Jesus says. She had all her pretenses. She left that in her water pot. Hmm? Isn't it amazing the woman that had to go draw water at noontime because she had a scarlet life? As soon as she got a drink of living water, first thing she did is ran to town and told everybody she could get a hold of, come see a man. Doesn't sound like she's ashamed of anything right now. Why? Because she just started living. She's clean now. Hmm? 
She left all of her piety, yeah. all of her self righteousness, all of her religion. Well, we worship, our fathers worship in this mountain. You say you're supposed to worship in. She's, she's, she's got some religion in her. She's talking about worship. The problem is she don't have Jesus in her. Yep. She loses all that. Loses all that piety, all that self-righteousness, all, all that she's as good as everybody else. And she don't need to get right with God. She knows what she's doing and all that. She lost all that. She left it in a well. Or she left it in a water pot. She don't have any of that stand on him. Brother Clint, there'd be a lot more people in heaven if they just turned loose of the religion and grab on to Jesus. I know Baptists are going to split hell wide open because they're so caught up in being a Baptist they've never got off that church pew and become a Christian. I'd rather be a believer than a Baptist. Now listen, I'm a Baptist by choice. My flat head and my flat feet, I'm a Baptist. Why? Because most of them are doing it the right way. Now, there are a lot of Baptists that are screwy. There's a lot of Baptists I wouldn't give you a flip for. Hmm? There are a lot of Baptist preachers I, I wouldn't sit under. They don't know the God of this book, or they don't preach the God of this book. God of this book is a, love and, a loving and compassionate and merciful and graceful God. You listen to some of these preachers, Lord have mercy. They need some grace. Uh, she, lost, she left her piety in that water pot. Hmm? You see, all that mattered was who she met at the well. Notice she didn't say, come get a drink of living water. She said, come see a man. She said, come see, is this not the Christ? So I found him, I found him, I found him. His name is Jesus. She didn't say, come see a Jew. See, salvation's in a person. And his name is Jesus. Notice she left her pride in that water pot. There's a lot of people who are going to die and go to hell because of their pride. Hmm? She left all of her arrogance in that water pot. Read this story again on your own. I don't want to go back, but she's telling Jesus how to worship. She's trying to give an exposition and all the homiletics on worship to the one who's worthy of our worship. That's pretty arrogant. It amazes me how many people come to church and they think they know more than the preacher. Well, you may know more than the preacher, but I doubt it. But I promise you this, you haven't studied as much as the preacher. You haven't prayed as much as the preacher. You haven't sought the face of God as much as the preacher. You haven't lost as much sleep as the preacher has uh, over this service that we're in right now. And I promise you this, uh, you didn't come through those doors seeking what the preacher's seeking. Hmm. She lost her arrogance. She admitted in her heart and then with her lips that she was wrong and Christ was on the scene and he was right. She lost her arrogance. She lost all of her assumptions. She assumed certain things. Hmm. Uh, she assumed that there are some that are more right and there are ways that are better and there are more ways to heaven and all kinds of... She assumed all kinds of... She lost all that. It's a good day when you realize you don't know anything. Amen. And He is everything. Yeah. Good. Amen. You know what else she lost? She lost her assurance. She's trusting in that she's in a Samaritan and that she's drinking from Jacob's well. She left that in the water pot. Now her assurance is in Jesus. It's a great day when you realize everything you trusted in is only taking you to hell. And by the way, that's all religion does is bring damnation. Salvation's of the Lord. Now let me say this. I'll be done. 
women of that day, and, and you can watch some things on, on you know, uh, National Ge Geographic channel and everything. You see people in the Middle East still do this, and people in India. Women that got their water in a water pot, they put it on their head, and they'd carry it home on their head. That baffles me that their necks can withstand that pressure. I promise you, every one of them in older age have neck problems. But you can watch them, and some of them have gone and done it so much, they can walk with that water pot without even steadying it with their hand. They would carry that water pot on their head. And they take that thing home. It's amazing, but you think about it. A big old pot full of water, be, you start carrying it like this, you're going to slosh it everywhere. You can't put it on your back. But they have taken that art and perfected it, carrying that water on their head. Now, listen to me. I'm going to read you a couple verses and we'll make a comment. I'm going to be done. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. Hebrews 12, 1, the writer of Hebrews says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. That's what she did when she left that water pot. She laid it aside. Hmm? And then it says, And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now here's my comment. You cannot, I mean, Paul told us in 1 Corinthians to run that we may obtain the prize. The writer of Hebrews, which many believes Paul as well, but the writer of Hebrews tells us to, to run our race with patience. Now here's my comment. You cannot effectively run with a water pot over your head. Now if you're here today and you're lost, it's because you're still holding on to your water pot. But if you meet Jesus, you'll leave your water pot behind. But the sad reality is, Brother Clint, that some people, after they started running this race, they go back and they grab that water pot and they put it over their head. You can't run with a water pot over your head. I've never seen any of them women on National Geographic or any other history channel carrying that water on their head where they're running. You can't wa run with a water, water pot on your head. Some of you got your water pot hanging over you. Some of you don't have victory this morning because your past and your water pot's hanging over you. Some of you don't have uh, any joy this morning because uh, uh, you got guilt hanging over you. Some of you uh, 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 aren't uh, being an effective witness because you got your sin still hanging over you. Some of you got some problems. You can't run your race because uh, your water pot's hanging over you. It'd be a great day for you today yeah, if you get in the altar and you just leave your water pot there uh, and go on and run for Jesus uh, and live effectively for Jesus uh, and tell others, come see a man uh, that told me all things ever I did. It is this not the Christ? Uh, hey, some of you aren't running because your water pot's slowing you down. Amen. You're here today and you're lost. You need to come bring your water pot, get a drink of living water, and go run for Jesus. Amen. If you're here today and you're saved and your water pot's hanging over your head, you need to get rid of that thing. It's affecting your run for Jesus. Preach the first of the year. We need to be relevant. You can't be relevant with a water pot hanging over your head. Too many of you. Got water pots slowing you down. Need to run our race. Some of you aren't even born again. You've been offering up excuses. You've been arguing this whole service that you're right with God. Well, let me help you something. Your argument's not with me. I can't hear a word you're saying. You're arguing with the Holy Ghost. He's trying to confront you with your sin. You need to do business with Him, get a drink of living water, let God save you, and it'll change your life, and your water pot won't matter anymore. Hmm? I've found this. You can't argue with God and win. It was a great day when I just got tired of arguing with him and just let him have his way. It would be a good day for your life if you do that today. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. I believe in my heart somebody needs, needs to get rid of their water pot. If you're lost, you need to come get saved. If you're saved and you're carrying around that water pot, why in the world are you carrying around a water pot? You look ridiculous. Why don't you come give your life to Jesus?
folks are coming they're picking out a song let's pray father we love you we sure do thank you for the word of god thank you for changing that woman's life lord she's going to be in heaven one of these days we're going to get to meet her and lord what a blessing she's not the woman at the well anymore she's a saint in glory we're thankful for that and god i'm thankful for throughout the ages there's been many people read that passage and got born again thank you lord God, I pray. Fear my soul. There's people in this service lost without God. They're offering up excuses and all kinds of things. Lord, they just need to come get born again and leave their water pot. Then, God, I know what happens. This race sometimes gets long, and sometimes it gets rocky, and sometimes it gets rough. And sometimes we're tempted to put them water pots back on our heads. God, some of your children may be guilty of that today. Lord, give them victory. God, help them. Lord, get rid of that water pot and then run their race for Jesus. God, do a work in people's hearts around here today. Save that one nearest hell. Get glory to your name. And Father, we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.